Hi, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Stina Lundgren, and I'm a Principal Project Advisor at Palago Bioscience. Today, I'm going to present about Setsa HT, a powerful assay for small molecule drug discovery. Palago, we're a Swedish CRO based in Stockholm. We're specialized on the Setsa technology, and we have the exclusive control of the Setsa IP. At Pelago, we have a dedicated R&D team that are constantly developed the sets of technology. We use the sets of technology to quantify target engagement. Target engagement quantification is important all through the discovery and development process. It ensures that a compound, your compound are interacting with its intended target at the intended site. And when you correlate the target engagement data with your efficacy data, you strengthen the target validation. And that is why we see SETSA being applied all through the drug discovery process, from early target identification through lead generation and lead optimization. We also do projects in preclinical development and also some in clinical development. Today, we have done more than 240 projects at Palago, and they have covered all stages of drug discovery. Some of the examples of the applications are uh, wide range from phenotypic deconvolution to safety assessment and biomarker investigations. But for the talk today, I'm going to focus on the SETSA HD for screening, HIT confirmation, and HIT optimization, but also how the assay can be used for compound design and, and guiding your chemistry program. SETSA can be applied to basically any sample. At Pelago, we have worked both with human and animal cell lines. We've done this in lysate and intact cells, primary cells, PBMCs, solid tissues, bacteria, and even plants. We think we see SETSA as one assay protocol with two different readouts. So the assay protocol is that you first treat your cells or tissues with your compound. Thereafter, you apply a heat shock. After the heat shock, you separate the soluble fraction, which you thereafter quantify. And that could either be done in the SETSA navigate format, which is this targeted SETSA, where you use an antibody for the detection. Or it can be done in the SETSA X4, where we use MS to do a protein by SETSA profiling. Today, uh, as I'm going to talk about the SETSA HT, which is part of the SETSA navigate technology family. A little bit about the assay principle. So upon heating, the native folded protein are being denaturated. Upon adding a compound, the native folded protein, the melt curve of the protein are changing. And this we can read. In this case, where for the SSH assay, we're using dual antibody based detection method. This could be either alpha lysa as illustrated here, but it can also be the HDRF technology. So sets a high throughput, which can be used to navigate your chemistry. It's a high throughput assay, it's plate-based and uses the dual antibody proximity assay. You're using your non-modified compounds, so there's no need to modify your compounds. And you're also using the non express protein in live cells. There's no cloning required. And putting these all together gives a very high physical relevance of this assay. So how is this done? So first you incubate your compounds with the cells. This is done in usually in 96, but most commonly in 384 plate format. Then you apply the heat shock, typically three minutes heat shock with a temperature ranging from 37 up to 65 degrees. You lyse the cells, and transfer them into the detection plate where you add the detection consumables. And then you detect. Here, you can see an example of a melt and shift curve where the DMSO curve you see here in blue and the two in pink and in green are the ones with the compound where you clearly see a shift of the melt curve upon compound incubation. Following this experiment, you can also do a concentration response curve. In that case, you select a single temperature, but you then do the isothermal concentration scans curve at this temperature. 
We also do single point screening. So this is at the single concentration at the single temperature. And this is ideal for screening. And that is one of the application of ZSHT. ZSHT has been applied in primary screening and recently Vertex and Astra presented their screens on both large HDS compound libraries, but as well smaller focus compound libraries. In this setting, you can both identify stabilizing and destabilizing compounds. It's an assay that to identify small molecule binders of the target. Usually hit rate is between 0.4% up to 1%. At Pelago, we also applied ZHD for fragment screening. So in this case, uh, we study MEC1. This was a collaboration with Sanofi. We did a fragment screening of around 200 fragments that were screened at the one millimolar fragments concentration. Following the screen, we confirmed them by doing dose response. As you see here in the plot, there's a quite range of compound activities that can be picked up with this set HD assay. And this highlights the sensitivity and robustness of the set HD which makes it applicable to both high and low affinity binders. Another application of such HT is to use it for heat confirmation. And that could be if you, for example, done a biochemical or biophysical screen and, when you, and you want to confirm your hits and make sure they're engaging the target in cell. To the left here, you see the correlation plot between the such HT and the biochemical FB assay for PAR. And as you can see, uh, there is a good correlation between, although some compounds are not showing the same activity in the SETSA-HD assay. And this could be either due to low permeability, but it also could be that the compounds are not able to engage the target in a cellular setting. The other plot here is the correlation between the SETSA-HD assay and the cellular function assay, in this case, a correlation assay. As you can see, most compounds are showing good correlation. And this, of course, is very important if you want to strengthen your target. So this, is, this highlights that your compounds are acting on the target and giving the functional effect you would like them to. But interestingly, well, you can see that the HD are picking up silent binders. So these compounds are binding to the target but are not giving the cellular effect. And these kind of compounds are particularly interesting for a protax project where you would like to identify binders that you can then uh, connect to an e free ligand binding motif. ZSAHD can also be used for SAR assessment. In this case, it's vimurafenib and then three analogs that are profiled against BRAF. And as you can see, this compound didn't engage BRAF in cell. So this can be used for ranking and prioritizing your lead compounds. And it gives you a relevant SAR as it's giving you data on how your compounds are engaging your target in the cell. This can also be used for guiding the compound design and deciding which compound to take forward to the next design route. Next, I'm going to talk about the case study we have conducted at Pelago. This case study is on MEC1 using an alpha setsa HD assay. We have profiled four different compounds. The top compound here is an ATP competitive compound. And looking at the effect on the thermal stability, you can see that this is a decrease in thermal stability. This is a destabilizing compound. Whereas the other non ATP competitive compounds are stabilizing MEC1 upon compound treatment. These four are stellar, allosteric compounds and are not binding to the ATP pocket. As the next step, we wanted to measure if we could study the inhibitor activity in parallel with the target engagement. Since this study, we uh, had a cell suspension, cell suspension, so A549 cells incubated with compound, and we studied the RAS-RAF pathway. 
where MEC is part of that and is phosphorylating ERK. The first step was to study the SETSA EC50. The first graph here you see with selectinib, one of the steric compounds. This is an isothermal concentration response curve conducted at 54 degrees. And as you can see, there is a, a positive effect on the thermal stability upon increasing compound concentration. As a next step, we looked at the effect. So in this case, the level of phosphorylated ERK. So if MEC would be inhibited, it wouldn't be able to phosphorylate ERK. So inhibition of MEC1 would have an effect on the phosphorylation level of ERK1. And quite interestingly, that is what we could observe as well. When increasing compound concentration, the level of phosphorylated ERK were decreased. And lastly, as a control experiment, we also looked at the total level of ERK, which was unaffected. So clearly the effect of selitinib was inhibiting MEK1 and thereby lowering the amount of phosphorylated ERK, but not the total level of ERK. Interestingly, we did the same for the ATP competitive compound, as you see here. The same effect were, were shown, were, were given with the compound uh, as for the non-ATP competitive compound. Although this compound was destabilizing MEC, when you look at the SETSA data, it was giving the same functional effect. And as you can see as well, the, the level of total ERK were not affected. So this clearly also show that the mode of action when you talk about SETSA is not related to the functional effect. You can have a compound that are destabilizing your protein and another compound that are stabilizing the same protein, but they can have the same functional effect. We also conducted a case study on Protax at Pelago. So in this case, we have the PROTAC where we have a ligand that recruits the E3 ligase. We have a linker and the warhead. And the PROTAC bind both to the E3 ligase and the target and bring them close together, causing a ubiquination of the target, which is marked for degradation by the proteasome. In this study, we profiled a set of CDK4 PROTACs. So these two PROTACs, they have two different warheads. One is based on Pablo Ciclib, uh, a known CDK4 inhibitor, and the other one based on Ribociclib, also a known CDK6-4 inhibitor. They have the same linker and also the same ligand for recruiting the E3 ligase cerebron. Both affected the thermal stability of CDK4 in a similar manner. Also comparing this with Pablo Ciclib, which has a larger effect on the thermal stability although that is not completely translated into the set EC50 that was measured at a single temperature. Following this study, we also looked at the PROTAC uh, against Cerebron, how well the ligand could engage the E3 ligase. So in this case, we included both uh, the PROTAC A and B, but also a non-CDK4 PROTAC, RA25, which is a BRD4 PROTAC, but has the same E3 ligand. And as you can see, all three of them were actually shifting the melt curve for Cerebron, confirming target engagement of this PROTAC. In this last case study, I'm going to talk about sets of HD profiling of sting antagonist and agonist. Sting is a set the HT assay we recently developed at Pelago. The agonists were inducing a large stabilization of sting. 10 degrees difference between the DMSO treated sample and the sting treated sample, and the sting agonist treated sample. The two inhibitors would, were giving a destabilization, although a smaller shift we're seeing is still significant. So what are the type of compounds you can profile with SETSA? First, the compound has to bind to the protein to induce a thermal shift. The ratio 
between the solubility and the affinity should be high. And the reason for this is that the top concentration in SETSA are usually one to two logs higher than the cellular EC50, and thereby you need a quite good solubility of your compounds. Here are some of the examples we have profiled at Palago, and that's ranging from agonists and antagonists, but also covalent binders and active site binders. We profile fragments and products and protects, and also larger molecules like antibodies and microcycles and peptides. So which targets are sensible? Taking into account the Pelago in-house experience, we know that proteins that have a size between 20 and 120 kilodaltons are usually easy, easier to set up a sets assay for, although we also work with larger proteins. We know that the location is important. Cytosolics are more sensible than membrane-bound proteins. Although we've been successful in setting up assays also for membrane-bound proteins, up to 14 TMs. We also work with nucleus and mitochondrial proteins. We know that the number of interactions the protein has is important. To, and if there's a protein that is part of a large protein complex, it might be harder to make that protein shift in the bulk curve. Last but not least, it also depends on the antibody availability. The sets of assay based on, on antibodies for detection will never be better than the quality of the antibodies. So when we take on a new project, we look at these criteria to see if we think the target is sensible or not. We also look in our sets of database. So we have a database of the sets of MS experiments we've done. And in that database, we can look for the frequency of detection of that specific protein in relevant cell lines. We can also look at the melting profile of that protein to see if it's melting in a, in a good temperature range. And we can also look if we ever detected a compound inducing a shift of that specific protein. Please come and visit our booth 513 to download the list of targets we have previously worked with. We're also happy to give you advice whether your target is accessible or not and do a sensibility assessment for you. To summarize, so SETSA HD can be used for ranking and prioritizing compounds. The applications are varying from primary screening and heat confirmation, SAR generation, but can also be used for translational studies. The sensitivity and robustness of the SSHD assay allows it to profile both high and low affinity binders. SSHD can also be used for profiling protags, and you can study both the target engagement towards the target protein as well as the E3 ligase. I want to thank you all for your kind attention, and if you want to learn more, please come and visit our booth. Buy one free, or you can also book a one to one with us to discuss more. If you want to learn more about how such MS proteomics can be used for protein degradation drug discovery, please tune in to the on demand presentation from Michael Dabrowski, CEO at Pelago Bioscience. Then I wish you all a good day. Thank you. <laughs>